I think the kids upstairs have gone. <laughs> Yeah. So I started my collage today. I'm so super excited. And actually, I'm giving the collage. Um, I'll put a picture here. This is just the outline. Um, gonna. It's a fox, and I'm gonna give this collage to my mom's boss. So. I'll update you when it's done. I'm just watching a movie. Everyone's in bed, so I'm talking quite low. Um, and just updating my planner. Um, putting in, making sure all my symptoms are in there. So like, for example, Monday, I put, um, felt off balance, painful to walk. Pain, burning, achy, legs and feet. My feet felt numb. I was nauseous, tired, aching, upper back and neck, headache. And then on Tuesday, which was the second, feet started feeling a little bit better, but still ache and numb. Nausea feels a little better, tired, back feels better, headache almost gone. Um, felt, hung felt hungry and ate well. And then I just continue on. So like today I had, um, the legs and feet started bothering me again. Um, I had numb toes, but upper legs are aching, almost like they're from the bones. Um, felt really nauseous again, took prescription, and it felt better. Tired, but can't sleep. Ate well in the morning, but lost my appetite by noon. And I'm going to keep this, um... And then take this with me to my appointments with my oncologist. Because they can kind of peek. Like the chemo, um, the pharmacy, pharmacy at the Cross Cancer makes the chemo up. And they can kind of adjust it. So like if um, they know that one of the chemo uh, ingredients in the chemo medication causes, let's say, the burning legs. They can maybe tweak it down so that I don't have as much of the burning legs. Um, they can kind of tweak... Oh, sorry. My leg is shaking. They can kind of tweak the... Um, the. I'm shaking here. Sorry. I'm holding my iPhone with my hand. They can kind of tweak the ingredients um, to kind of counteract some of the like worst symptoms that you get. They can't always do it, but sometimes they can. So keeping track of your symptoms and reviewing them with your oncologist is really, really important. So I'm really glad I came up with that agenda idea to do that, um, to keep track of everything. So, yeah. So what I'm vaping on today is... And each is called Freshly Baked, and it's like a white chocolate macadamia nut cookie. I wouldn't say it exactly tastes like that, but it's pretty good. So, um, I've been almost two years smoke-free. And even though smoking does not cause either one of the cancers that I have, the cancer of the blood or the endometrial cancer, I thought quitting smoking was really important, um, and I did it by vaping. I'm not telling people to go out there and vape. I'm not, you know, although I am an advocate for vaping and do truly, truly believe in it. Um, it's a personal decision, but that's what worked for me anyway. Okay, I've adjusted my iPhone here. I hope it's a little bit better for you. Hope you can hear me because I have to talk really low because um, everybody's sleeping. But I wanted to do this video and talk about why I tie titled my video I was murdered um, I wanted to talk to you about this because if there's one thing that comes out of my battle with endometrial cancer if there is one thing that comes out of this channel 
it is hopefully to help at least one person. I don't care about views. I don't care about making money. None of that stuff even matters to me. What I do care about is spreading awareness. And I want to try to prevent what happened to me from happening to other people, from happening to you. So I'm going to share my story. And my intent is not to badmouth anybody or condemn anybody but to tell you that if you know something is wrong with you you don't feel well and you're not getting the answers from your doctor or you feel like they're dismissing you or not listening to you get a second get a third get a fourth get a 20th opinion we know our bodies we know when we something is not right and I wish to God somebody had given me this advice a year ago. I wouldn't, I don't think I would be in the situation I am right now. So let's get started. Story time with Tammy. Today is story time with Tammy. So grab your tea or your juice or your coffee or whatever and come join me. And let's go to story time land. <laughs> In 2014, I found out that I had cancer of the blood, and you can go visit this video to find out how that all began. Now, when I made this video, I didn't know I had endometrial cancer. I only knew that I had cancer of the blood. But in 2014, I was diagnosed with cancer of the blood, and that particular cancer of the blood is called my Quasis fungoides. And it is terminal, there's no cure but it is considered usually indolent, which means it's slow acting, which means it can take, in some cases, 20 years to go from stage one to stage four. So, I mean, that's, you know, a pretty good lifespan. When I was diagnosed, they figured I had it anywhere from 16 to 18 years, and maybe even a little bit longer. And um, with the treatments that we did with the oral chemos and the biochemical chemo and the radiation treatments, it had gone from stage four bumped down to stage three, which we were very happy. But during that time, blood work kept coming back that kept showing really high um, white blood cell counts, um, really, my blood work kept coming back bad. And we couldn't figure it out what was going on. And at one point, somewhere um, last, in 2017, somewhere like, I can't remember, any somewhere between January and March, I can't remember exactly when. Um, and I'll put a link to a video where I talk about, do I have a second cancer? They thought, maybe I have a second cancer. So they did biopsies again, and it all came back again, showing my quasis fungoides. So we thought, okay, we, the bad blood work is from the quasis fungoides. Looking back now, we know that I had endometrial cancer. That's why my blood work was coming back bad, and nobody knew it. The problem is, and the reason why I say that I have been murdered, is that my doctor didn't, my family doctor did not listen to me. I kept going to her since 2015 with complaints about heavy bleeding, pain, um, huge blood clots, and this is so gross, and if you can't handle gross, gory, bloody stuff, then maybe this isn't the video for you. So if you can't talk, handle talk about blood please don't watch this but I would have blood clots coming out the size of my my fist and it was nasty disgusting there was a foul odor that would come out um, and I had already gone through menopause 
I already had menopause. I had menopause early. I had menopause in my late 30s. I'm now 45. Um, because I had my period young. I started my period when I was nine years old. I started my period very young. So, you know, going through early menopause in my head was normal. Like, I thought, okay, well, I started uh, menstruating very early. So, makes sense that I'd probably go through menopause very early. Um, 2015, I started bleeding. Um, it started off gradually, like spotting. Um, and eventually I had to wear a pad all the time because I was bleeding all the time. And I went to the doctor, for, my family doctor multiple times and complained about this. And um, in the end of 2016, I started getting ab lower abdominal pain as well as the heavy bleeding. I believe it was September of 2016. Um, 16 that I had gone into emergency because I was bleeding very heavy and had really bad um, pain um, I also when I did have my period I never had cramping maybe twice in my lifetime two or three times I didn't have heavy um, overly heavy periods my periods would last a couple of weeks at a time, but they were, you know, just normal periods. Um, I didn't have a lot of menstrual cramping. I never had PMS. And so I had it pretty easy um, as a woman menstruating. Um, some of the horror stories that I've heard, I think I had it pretty easy. And when I went into early menopause, I thought, okay, you know, I had my period early, so it makes sense that I would go into menopause early. But after I had not had a period for three years, and then all of a sudden started spotting, I went to my doctor, told her about this, she dismissed it. Um, I told her about the pain that started in 2016. I ended up in emergency a few times because of heavy bleeding, and it was all dismissed. Um, she didn't do anything about it. Um, I was told it was anxiety. I was told it was stress um, because of the lupus, because of the cancer of the blood. Um, I was depressed. These are the things that I was told and I should have pursued it, but I didn't. So it's partly my fault. If you go back through my videos, you'll see where I started having pain and I would talk about, you know, the pain. At first I thought, well, maybe I didn't go through menopause. And for some reason I didn't have a period for three years. And then I thought, well, maybe I have, um, because of the radiation that I had done in that area, um, it's activated my lupus and maybe my lupus is causing this bleeding. And then I thought, well, you know, this pain is not getting any better. I'm having to take more and more pain meds. Um, you know, maybe I've got endometriosis or, you know, and all these thoughts came. It wasn't until I ended up in the hospital with a blood clot in my lung that I insisted because I had so much pain in that area that they do um, an ultrasound and a CT scan that it came back that I had these cysts, what they were labeling as cysts in that area. And it wasn't until my cancer doctor, who I saw in September of 2017, mentioned I had a nodule in my lung that she beca she became concerned, my oncologist became concerned, and started the process of checking what was going on in there. And then, of course, November 9th of 2017, I was diagnosed with terminal non-curable endometrial cancer too late. Had my family doctor listened to me a year ago and had taken into consideration that the symptoms of endometrial cancer are pain in the abdomen, heavy bleeding, especially after menopause, heavy clots, blood loss, um, sometimes requiring blood transfusions, and I had seven of them 
in 2017 in the span of two weeks because of blood loss. Had she had taken into consideration that um, people who have never had children, which I've never had, people who um, started their periods early are often candidates for endometrial cancer. She did nothing a year, year and a half ago, two years ago, when I started complaining about this in 2015. And I really feel that because she didn't do her job as a doctor, I've been murdered, basically. Um, had she have done the tests and we had caught this early, I don't think I would be dying right now. And so I became very anger, angry. I became very bitter. And I had considered suing her, which I decided not to. I decided to forgive her. The reason I did that was because there is no room for hate in my heart. I'm dying. Why do I want to use my energy up on that? No. I have to forgive her. She's a human being. She makes mistakes. But my message to you is... If you know or suspect something is wrong with you medically, do not give up until you find the answer. Dr. A doesn't give you the answer, go to Dr. B, go to Dr. C, go to Dr. X, go to Dr. Z. Especially in Canada, where our healthcare is free, basically, um, where we have universal healthcare coverage, you have to fight for your right to get a diagnosis. I fought for how many years to get a diagnosis for lupus and I should not have given up, but I did. You know, I got tired of fighting. Don't be a fool like me. If you know something is wrong, pursue it. And so that's my little story. Um, and now I am facing terminal cancer. The other thing I want to say is that, and I'm not pushing my religious beliefs on anybody, please, but I am a born-again Christian. I gave my heart back to Jesus in 2014, but I have really been struggling spiritually. I don't understand how I, you know, he's helped me so much, but I'm dying. I want him to heal me. I do. I want God to heal me. But it's his will, not mine. So, please, please, please remember me in your prayers. Um, and I'm going to keep fighting. Um, I'm not ready to give up. And you know what? God's will is God's will. And I hope he just gives me the courage to face this. Um, when I was in the hospital at the University of Alberta for a couple of days, um, I think it was around September, yeah, September of 2017, there was a lady who had cancer in the bed beside me, and she actually passed away that night. It wasn't pleasant. And I guess I'm kind of afraid of what the end will be like. Will I suffer? But I know God will be there with me, and everybody has to die. I just didn't expect it would be this soon. So, I'm going to work on a couple more videos. Um, I'm working on my collage, which I will put in some clips in the next couple of days of me working on that. And, um, yeah, so until next time, guys, if you liked this video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up, baby. Subscribe to my channel. And until next time, guys, happy living. Life's too short not to be happy. Pizza. Go on. Go on.